All right, hey guys, what's going on? So today we are going to be talking about the Lorentz group. As I mentioned before, the Lorentz group is going to be, we're hinting towards the physics connection here between our mathematical sort of SU2 groups, all that mathematical jargon, and we're gonna now be putting this in the context of physics, right? Because again, the Lorentz group is going to be, those are, the, the that group is the group of matrices that preserve the Minkowski metric essentially. So without further ado, hit that like and subscribe button. You can visit my Patreon page if you want uh, early content. Now let's get into the video. So we are talking about the Lorentz group of 013 today. Now, if this here is new to you, this notation, this really just means, so when we're talking about one, we're talking about our temporal the temporal part of our Minkowski metric, my, my apologies. And then when we're talking about three here, we're talking about the spatial parts. So, and these have different uh, signs on them. Now, I'm not going to go and derive exactly why the Minkowski metric is the way it is. Uh, there's videos on YouTube that sort of go through that already. There's a really good uh, video on YouTube that's a couple of years old now. Um, by Dr. Physics A, I think is his name, that goes into uh, why the temporal and the spatial components are different signs from one another, and how they sort of play a role in hyperbolic geometry and stuff. That's going to be something interesting that I might work on later uh, in a different uh, playlist. However, we're going to start from just knowing what the Minkowski metric is. All right, so this is a Minkowski metric. We're primarily interested now in matrices that preserve this metric. So before we do that, though, let's take a look at an arbitrary metric because what we're going to find is that no, not all matrices will preserve this, okay? And this is sort of something that was a little bit confusing to me when I was started to go through this kind of stuff, which is... Don't all matrices preserve this metric? And this was naive me thinking that they did. And so I had to go through an example to see, well, indeed, they don't. Right. So and what we, what exactly do we mean by preservation also? So what we mean by preservation is this guy right here. OK, so A is going to be our arbitrary mat uh, metric and G is our, going to be our Minkowski metric. Right. Uh, the reason I call it G and not eta as I've shown right here, is because G is a more general way of talking about our metric. Um, G, I, J uh, is usually called the metric or the metric tensor. Uh, a very specific form of G is eta, and that is this Minkowski metric. So, just to be clear, I'll say A, eta, a t equals eta. So this is a special case in which we're talking about the Minkowski metric. Let's consider now an arbitrary uh, transformation matrix that looks like this. So that's kind of just I pulled this matrix out of my butt. <laughs> and we are going to take a look at if this matrix or if this transformation preserves the matrix, or preserves the Minkowski metric. Okay. Let's talk first about the transpose of this matrix. Okay, well, the transpose is just going to be transposing all the offset diagonals. All right, so that's going to be this guy right here. So the transpose of the matrix times G, or times eta, um, and we're talking about just a, a two-dimensional case here. Um, this guy, so this guy here, when multiplied by this guy is going to give us this. And then uh, we then multiply A by this guy here. Right? So here's this guy. We're going to multiply it by A. And what we actually get, right, if I'll zoom in here, 3 times 3 well, that's 9 plus 4 times 4 is 16. Well, that's going to give us 27. Off the bat already, we're seeing, okay, this does not equal um, 
this does not equal eta. This does not equal our Minkowski metric. So in this case, um, or at least in a two-dimensional case, we can't find, it's, there are some matrices that don't preserve even the identity matrix, right? Or the, even this matrix right here. Um, you could see that the identity, when multiplied by any matrix, will give you back that matrix, right? But the idea of preservation again, is through this equation, where we then multiply it by the transpose. Uh, so th this is the idea of preservation. And so in this case, in this specific case, we don't have this, this relationship is holds, right, where this is actually not equal. So we can take, so no arbitrary matrix is going to preserve the Minkowski metric. Right. As we've seen in this tiny little example here, uh, all uh, uh, we can now think, okay, this is not going to be all matrices. Now let's think what matrices could preserve the Minkowski matrix. Well, let's consider this matrix right here. Might seem arbitrary at first, but uh, let's just go with it. Let's just go with it. We're just picking a random example here, and we're going to see how this works. So... I was careful to do the um, multiplication here, but let's see. So when we take the Minkowski metric, so here's our Minkowski metric. Here's the transpose of this guy, right? So we just transpose the negative, and then we multiply. Right, so when we multiply, we get uh, this guy right here, right? So then this guy times our matrix, right? So that's this right here. That's this. Well, lo and behold, we actually get our Minkowski metric. Okay, now I'm not going to go through all the, the details of this mathematical um, calculation, right? This is, um, this is really just a lot of, uh, this is just matrix multiplication. Okay, and the transpose, again, this here, these two guys are transposes, which is why I put the T in blue here. This is a transpose of this, and you could see, and, and you'll be able to see how this works out. The determinant, so this is actually kind of interesting also. So the determinant of the matrix that we found to preserve the metric is actually equal to 1. Okay, so and you can see that here, right? 1, um, so this minus 1 here is uh, this 1 right here. Because if you remember when you take determinants, you have to flip the addition or the subtraction every row you go or every column or every column you go this way every column you go basically so the negative of this is just positive one and we find out that so we then take the determinant of this column and this column combined together and we get this guy uh, so we get one here and so so the determinant of the transformation is one All right so this is what's meant by volume preserving I'll, I'll write this down Volume preserving. Okay. So, okay. So what we have here is th this is this is the matrix. This is the matrix, and this is the determinant of the matrix that preserves the Minkowski metric. Notice that if we swap. So if we swap the negative, well, that go, that makes our determinant go to negative 1. So swapping the temporal component swaps the sign of the determinant. Right. So that's interesting. Notice also that if we make these guys negative, right? So these guys didn't change from here. But if we swap these guys then this also takes us to negative 1. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. This actually, should, so this should be, oh, my bad. This should be positive, right? Because, oop, so that should be positive. So we want to take the determinant of this right here, 
So if that's positive, this is actually going to be, oh, this is actually going to be one, right? So, uh, so this times this, yeah, that's going to be one and that's going to be one. So this actually doesn't make it go to one. So, so what we actually, <laughs> this is my bad here, but what we actually see is that we can swap the entries basically. We can, if we swap the entries, then if we swap these two entries, then the uh, the determinant goes to negative one. Swapping the ten, the spatial indices actually makes it go to one. So making the spatial components negative does not swap. So, and this doesn't really change what I'm going to say next here. Uh, does not, does not swap the determinant. All right. This doesn't change what I'm going to say next. Um, what I'm, the point here is that we're going to call changes of this sort, of the determinant going from 1 to negative 1, as being called parity transformations. Um, so, and this is going to be important later when we talk about um, when we talk about some more advanced topics in spin, because the, the the idea here is that okay, well these guys are Minkowski preserving. If they're Minkowski preserving, uh, they obey the Lorentz group, which is what we're going to see. And if they obey the Lorentz group, then again, what I've said before. SU two matrices are going to be linked to this somehow, or those are they're going to be representations, and uh, so we can ask the question: Okay, what is a parity transformation in terms of the lower representations, or not lower, but in terms of well, uh, SU two representations in an SU two world? Essentially, what does a parity transformation look like? And so we want to keep. We just want to keep the idea of a parity transformation in the back of our minds right now. We're not. We won't come to it until later. But the, again, the key here is that we're going to find members of a Lorentz group that are going to obey the Lie algebra for SU two, and therefore we can find different uh, SU two representations for the Lorentz group. So I'm sort of repeating myself here, but again, the idea is that we are interested in representations, right? So we get a Lorentz group, we find the representations of that Lorentz group. When we find the representations of, the, of those Lorentz groups, we're going to find that they act on uh, spin. They are also going to act on four vectors. Okay. That's really what the, the bare bones here. That's what we're going for. And then later, we're going to find out that uh, when we're talking, when we put everything in the, in, term, in the picture of Lagrangians, then things get really, really interesting. Because the idea here is that right now, we're kind of just looking at special relativity. We're looking at the matrices that preserve certain types of, uh, um, uh, cert certain types of metrics. And preservation of the, and so that's what we're looking at right now. Later on, we're going to be looking at preservation of Lagrangians. And so you might you might think, okay, we preserve uh, metrics, right? Minkowski metric, metric tensor, say we're preserving metrics, but we're also later going to be looking at preserving Lagrangians, or at least making Lagrangians invariant under transformations and that, that's the whole point right we are making metrics invariant and we're make, we're going to be making lagrangians invariant essentially what we want to find are all the invariant quantities under these different representations so we're going to so we're going to cast the lagrangians into the pool of su2 su3 and all this all this kind of stuff 
We're going to throw those into the pool. Also, we're going to see the interesting things that come out of that. What we're going to find are isospin. We're going to find quarks. We're going to find leptons. We're going to find all these terms uh, that we can get from really just considering invariance under these different types of transformations. And so with that being said, I hope you guys like this kind of content. Again, make sure to hit that like and, su that like and subscribe button. And if you like this kind of content also, and you want to see it ahead of time, you can go onto my Patreon page where a lot of videos will be coming up before videos come up on YouTube. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.